Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a really common type of problem you might see in interviews, comparing version numbers. It seems simple at first, but there are a few tricky details we need to get right. Let's break it down together. So the problem gives us two strings, which it calls version 1 and version 2, in PSET style. Our job is to figure out which one is newer, older, or if they're the same. We need to return a negative 1 if version 1 is smaller, a positive 1 if it's bigger, and 0 if they're equal. First things first. What exactly is a version string? It's just a set of numbers, which the problem calls revisions, separated by dots. So when you see a string like 1.2.3, it's really three separate revision numbers we need to look at. The key is that we have to compare them in order, from left to right. Now, here's the first important rule. We're comparing the integer value of each revision. This means any leading zeros are ignored. So, a revision that looks like 0, 1 is treated exactly the same as a revision that's just 1. They both represent the number 1. This is a crucial point to remember. The comparison has to happen from left to right, one revision at a time. Let's take 1.10 and 1.2. First, we look at the very first revision in each. Both are 1. Since they're equal, we move on, then we look at the second revision. Here we have 10 and 2. 10 is greater than 2, and that's it. We can stop right there. The first version string is greater, and we don't need to look any further. What happens if the version strings have a different number of parts? For instance, comparing 1.0 with 1.0.0, the rule is simple. If a version string runs out of revisions, you just treat any missing ones as 0. So 1.0 is effectively the same as 1.0.0. This makes sure the comparison is always fair. Okay, let's walk through an example from the problem description. We have 1.2 and 1.10. First, we split them into their revision parts. The first version gives us 1 and 2. The second gives us 1 and 10. Now, we compare the first parts, 1 and 1. As numbers, they're equal, so we keep going. Next, we compare the second parts, 2 and 10. The number 2 is less than the number 10, so we've found our answer. The first version is smaller, and we return negative 1, so our overall strategy is pretty clear. We'll take both version strings and split them at the dots to get two lists of revisions. Then, we need to loop through them. A clever way to handle different lengths is to loop a number of times equal to the length of the longer list. Inside our loop, for each position we'll grab the revision number from both lists. If one of the lists is shorter and doesn't have a revision at that position we'll just pretend it's a zero. Then we compare the numbers. The moment we find a difference, we know our answer. If we get all the way through the loop without finding any differences, it means the versions are identical. Alright, here is the complete Python code that puts our plan into action. It might look a little dense at first, but don't worry, we're about to break down each part of it step by step. First up, the setup. We take the input strings, version 1 and version 2, and we use the split method with a dot, as the separator. This gives us our two lists of revision strings. Then, we figure out the lengths of both lists, and find the maximum of those two lengths. This max len value tells us exactly how many times we need to loop to check every possible revision. Now for the core of the logic, the loop itself. We loop from an index i starting at 0, up to that max length we just calculated. Inside the loop we need to get the revision numbers. Look at the line for r1, below where. It says, if our current index i is less than the length of our first revisions list, then we take the item at that index, and turn it into an integer. But, if the index i is too big, meaning we've run out of revisions, we just use 0 instead. We do the exact same thing for the second list, to get r2. Once we have our two numbers for the current revision, r1 and r2, the comparison is straightforward. We check if r1 is less than r2. If it is, we immediately return negative 1 and we're done, otherwise we check if r1 is greater than r2. r2. If that's true, we return positive 1. If neither of these is true, it means the numbers are equal, so we just continue to the next iteration of the loop. Finally, if our loop completes without ever returning, it means every single revision was identical. In that case, we return 0. So how efficient is this solution? For time complexity, we have to split the strings and then iterate. Splitting takes time proportional to the length of the strings, let's call them n and m. The loop runs a number of times based on the number of revisions. So, the time complexity is roughly big O of n plus m. For space we have to store the lists of revisions we create from splitting, so the space complexity is also big O of n plus m. So let's quickly recap the main points. 
The best way to tackle this is to split the strings into lists of revisions. The most important trick is to remember to convert those revisions into numbers before you compare them. And finally, you have to have a strategy for when the version strings have different numbers of parts, and the easiest way is to treat any missing parts as zero. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.